Good morning, everybody. So this weekend I did a thing. Uh, printer number one here had lost its main board some time ago. And so I replaced it with a different one that had the wrong firmware on there. Um, so I finally figured out how to refresh the firmware. And then once I got it up and running and it was running beautifully, I completely tore apart, uh, redesigned new brackets. Uh, so like here's, uh, here's one of the original ones. And you can see there's belts on this bracket and now it's switched over to a lead screw driven. Uh, it's quite a bit noisier than the original one, but uh, I'm hoping it'll be a more precise printer in the end, which is, you know, because there's quite a bit of uh, flex in the, uh, the belt-driven setup. But anyway, a uh, quick tour around this frame. Uh, I added this uh, stiffener for the Z-axis and then designed this plate to kind of bridge between the two of them so we don't have hardly any... Uh, you know, Z-axis wobble. Um, also designed some hold downs for it right here. So this this frame is locked into this outer uh, carrier board. Um, I did my best to make it where I could get the parts in and out. So if you actually look, uh, this is relieved on the back side here. So if I ever have to remove this lead screw, I can take it apart and slide it out of there without too much grief. Uh, it's, a, it's a little snug, but I mean, it's kind of the way it is. And I can, I can just unbolt this uh, uh, frame from its baseboard and it'll relocate pretty well. Um, yeah, so yeah, today I'm doing the universal test that I do with pretty much every printer now. Uh, due to its difficulty being printed uh, is I'm printing another yet another hypno toad uh, There's a lot of retraction in them in the way the model files set up. So it makes uh, That's why I really realized there was a firmware problem with this printer and after I changed the board because the retraction was all messed up um, But yeah, uh yeah, a few trial and error things that I found um, when I was uh, converting it. So like these brackets that I, I actually found online, um, the, uh, the relationship of the guide rod to the lead screw was off by about three millimeters, which is just m might as well be off by a mile at that point. Um, and then this was my first attempt at this piece here. I ended up uh, changing it quite a bit once I realized uh, it didn't need to be this way and actually made it easier to print. Um, yeah, so this was my second attempt before I realized there was a bug. So I printed, uh, printed these two pieces ahead of time and not knowing that they had an alignment issue. Uh, I had to extend this one out because uh, the lead screw I got was just a little on the short side and I probably could have gotten a different lead screw and it would have helped. But anyway, so re did a realignment of this and I think this has almost got a better alignment than the factory ones did. They, they always seemed to be a little, uh, felt like they were binding. but. Uh, and, and actually the kind of the proof of it, if you look down this hole, uh, they used to always be pushed like way over here on the, on the end of the lead screw there. So uh, yeah, we're, we're a little, little closer than it was before. And you know, I'm not asking for perfection cause you know, this is just a home brewed, you know, experiment at this point. And honestly, I, I don't know I would do a lead screw printer again. Uh, or if I did, I'd probably do a much smaller one for doing fine work. Um, but yeah, proof of concepts here. I just, I hate how noisy it is. That's going to drive me nuts. So I'll probably just uh, put a really small nozzle in this one and only ever use it when I need to do something super precise. Because really, I got the, I got number two and number three over there all dialed in just you know, doing what they do day in and day out. So yeah, at some point I'll get the jumbo up and running. 
which now that I know how to flash firmware, that'll make the jumbo printer even possible. So, because uh, I was actually changing bed dimensions, reversing the, the lead screw directions and all that kind of stuff. I actually had to invert both the X and the Y to even make it run correctly. Uh, changed all the uh, steps per millimeter, all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, that's uh, kind of what I've been up to and uh, you know, I almost forgot to tell you the why we are doing this. So this was uh, printed on, I think it was printer number one uh, using a 0.5 millimeter nozzle and it really didn't come out very nice. Uh, so then I switched printer number two, which has a, uh, a tooth driven uh, uh, pulley. You know, so on, on a lot of these printers, uh, like inside, uh, inside here, it's got a smooth pulley. So as this cog belt runs over it, it tends to make little bumpy artifacts in there. So I switched number two, printer number two, over to these uh, tooth driven ones. So even for the idlers to try and smooth out the movement. And it, I believe it sort of worked. Um, I was able to get really nice results out of, uh, out of that, out of a .03 nozzle. Uh, just the lettering was a little too fine for the .5 to pick all the detail up when, when the slicer got done doing its magic. So I'm hoping that I can run a .2 or a .3 millimeter nozzle and then run an even lower layer height. And because of the uh, more consistency that I should be getting out of this printer, um, get even, even greater detail out of it. Uh, again, probably not gonna run the printer very fast because it just really doesn't like running fast. It's, you know, kind of the nature of the lead screw, I guess. But anyway, that, that's it. That's uh, why we're here and even attempting to do this. And really, other than my time, I probably, I only spent about $30 on, on lead screws uh, doing this mod. Um, and then I had a couple of, well, I think, actually, no, it came with, it came with the bearings. It came with the, uh, um, the threaded inserts for everything to run on. I think I had a couple extras because um, I actually, uh, on both the, both X and Y, I ran a, a front and a rear, and then I left one of them with a little bit of a gap so I can adjust the uh, uh, tension on the lead screw and, and minimize the amount of backlash. Um, but anyway, that's what we're doing. It, it, I, th I, I think I'm gonna call this one a success even though it's not done running yet. Um, it's just a matter of uh, seeing how it all comes out and I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a really nice looking model when it's done. Um, but anyway, that's it. I guess until next time.